once again, Star Wars and Unboxing fans, welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba. So today, as you can see, we have a thematic opening um, with uh, Cars, Star Wars crossover themed uh, vehicles, which we're going to do in just a moment. But before we do, I do want to announce the winner of our giveaway um, that uh, was out two episodes ago. And uh, actually, three episodes, I think, technically. But um, the winner for that, which is the Itty Bitties Wicked and Chief Turpas two pack. I'm happy to report that the winner is Hannah Mills. So, Hannah, thank you for leaving a comment. Congratulations, and send me your contact information, and I will get this out to you right away. So, um, again, congratulations to Hannah Mills, and we will have another giveaway soon. Um, at this point, um, I'm, I'm actually digging into some old uh, collectible items that I've, you know, acquired over the years to do some unboxing. So right now, I wanted to gather up the Cars collection, for the most part. There's a couple that I have kept in the box, uh, mostly because uh, they're a little bit more rare, and um, perhaps we'll uh, go through some of those in a later episode. But this set, uh, just to let you know, uh, this crossover was only available in Disney Parks, okay? It was a series that came out in, I'm gonna say, it was, it, it, some of these are listed as 2013, some are listed as 2014, so I'm going to say like the 2012 to 2015 range, okay? And I got to say, if there is a, you know, there are certain um, fr toy franchises, I mean, you know, movie franchises that are also toys, or toy franchises that were toys first and then became sh movies or TV, there are certain franchises that really transcend time. Some of them, like before Star Wars, it was G.I. Joe and Barbie. Um, and then later on, um, Star Wars came into play, and you saw Star Wars, it was uh, Transformers was another one. But I gotta say, if there is a, um, another toy franchise tied directly from a movie that uh, comes pretty darn close to uh, really getting a strong collectability factor, uh, I think it's something, and I think it's something that's going to find a niche in the future with adult collectors when, they, that, when this movie came out when they were kids, and that's the Cars franchise. Now, I will say that the Cars sequels, 2 and 3, didn't fare as well as the original did, as opposed to the Star Wars original trilogy, which all three of those movies were very, very, you know, highly well-received, at least, and have transcended a lot of things in time. Uh, but, nonetheless, um, there was a long gap between the first Cars movie and the second Cars movie, and there was a huge amount of stock. Every character that you saw in there and every variation you can imagine. And the thing about it is that essentially it was just like getting involved with like a Matchbox car or Hot Wheels, except it was cars. And um, there was just such a neat displayability factor, playability factor. There were play sets and things that you could do for young people. Old people could put them into, adults could put them into display cases. It was just a great um, setup. So to combine the two and have Star Wars and cars, um, I think was a fantastic idea. I don't believe it has continued. I think that it has mostly run its course. It seems to me like that the Lucasfilm and Disney branding of Star Wars now has kind of focused most of its attention on all the new movies and properties that come out. Uh, and they want to protect the, the reputation of the brand. So we don't see as many Disney or, Cap Disney or Muppet characters um, dress up. I do plan on doing a future episode where we do some unboxing of some of those characters as well because they were um, they were fantastic. You know, they were great when they came out. I'm glad that they came out. Um, I understand if Disney wants to kind of get away from that for a while and just focus on um, just you know actual in-universe characters as opposed to crossovers. But still, I think it was a neat um, play on uh, two really fun franchises. So why don't we tell? Let's kind of go down the line here. So who do we have first? We have Chick Hicks. It's a Boba Fett. Chick Hicks was the original. Oh my goodness! Almost dropped, knocked over my Death Star here. Uh, Chick Hicks was originally the uh, kind of the bad guy uh, car from the original movie, and he was played by voiced by Michael Keaton. So he did a great job. We have a three pack here: C-3PO and uh, Luigi as C-3PO, and the Pities as Jawa, meaning some of the pit, um, not not his, not uh, Guido, but some of the other um, pit members that are actual Jawas, which I think is clever. Then we have um, Red as Chewbacca. <laughs> Makes sense. The Red's the biggest vehicle. So, of course, he would be um, Chewbacca. We have uh, Lightning McQueen as Luke Skywalker. Love the little lightsaber on the side, so we'll get that out in a second. We have um, Sally as Princess Leia. 
Okay, there you go. The This is the old school New Hope Princess Leia. Here's one that's cool. Ramon as Han Solo. I think that's really cool. And Fillmore is Yoda. It seems kind of about right, the philosophical Fillmore. We have, and then we have a tractor as a stormtrooper. Then we have this, another special two pack that is a tractor as sand troopers. Okay? So this is a limited edition, but I'm going to tell you guys anything that when Disney puts limited edition on anything, it ain't so limited. So we will uh, do an unboxing without too much concern. All right, so why don't we just kind of start on this end? Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to start in story order, starting with episode four, story order. So we're going to start over here with the. With 3PO and the pitties as Jawas. Pretty easy to open up. Um, I do notice a lot of times that the that the Disney Parks branding um, of toys tends to be a little easier to unbox, which is nice. All right, and and the really cool thing you got to really take a good close look at these vehicles, okay? Because you're going to see all sorts of different things. The way they set it up, okay? Like, for example, the on, Gui on uh, Guido's, um, not Guido, Luigi, excuse me, Luigi's uh, eyes, he has the, the same color eyes as Stupio. His front of his hood has the wiring, and he's got some of the gears on the side and the back. I mean, it's very well themed. I don't know if you're going to see it from here, but I'll, I'll either tack um, some close up photos on the back at the end of the video, or I'll, I will um, superimpose them inside. And then we have the, the Jawas, which are pretty plain, but the sides of them have their, uh, their little bandolier straps. And one of them comes with the actual gun that uh, stuns uh, R2-D2, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so when next we think, oh, I guess I pro probably should have started with Princess Leia, because she was technically, um, well, C-3PO three, three, was first, then Leia, then later on was the Jawas. All right, and C-3PO, okay. Or sorry, um, Princess Leia. What's really cool about Princess Leia is the fact that um, the ears, the not the ears, the hair buttons, if you will, are made of tires, spare tires on the left and right side. So they're, that's really cool. And it just has that nice white idea. Um, it does have a, I guess the headlights kind of emulate the necklace, okay? But, um, or the belt. So that's kind of cool. And then I guess the next one we would run into, well, I guess we would run into a Stormtrooper. So let's get the, uh... ooh, this one's a little hard to open. Tractors. Tractors is so dumb. Tractor tipping. Anybody who saw that, who saw the original Cars movie and saw that scene and was from New Jersey, um, laughed a little harder than a lot of other people because tractor tipping was something that, I don't know, Jersey and Jerseys did, Jersey and did. I never did. But I've heard others may have tried. Okay. And it even... <laughs> so you can even have them tip over if you want to try tack tractor tipping. Pretty cool. But if you look at them closely... Funny thing is, you, this thing spins a lot. So you got you got your own fidget spinner if you want. <laughs> okay. Um, his main exhaust vent here is, a, is the weapon, is the, is the uh, blaster. All right, and he's got his, you know, all the other details, including the bent, slightly bent uh, canister in the back is there. So pretty cool. All right. C-3PO goes in, meets with the Jawas. Uh, I guess we don't see the Sand Troopers until we see Luke, even though this is Luke dressed as actually Pilot Luke. We'll go by character. All right, Luke really cool thing about this character, Luke, is you have his helmet, you have um, the chest plate is in the center of his hood, you have his lightsaber off on the side, which is really, really cool. Okay, and even has his little uh, speaker, his little uh, uh, radio uh, microphone, so very good detail. I bet you the, the designers that put these together from Disney probably had the time of their lives doing that. That's really cool. All right, let's move on. You know, you know, before we get to the Sand Troopers, let's go over here to Chewbacca. Now there are other ones. I don't have the complete collection. I have most of them. 
And you might still find them in the parks. I'm not sure if they still sell them in the stores or not. But, um, take a look next time I'm down there. <laughs> this is a, now, obviously, of all the cars, this is the bulkiest car. I mean, look at the size of this thing. Because red is really big, and they try to make it at least semi-proportionate. Um, I love the look on his face. He's got the growl, okay? Definitely, um, oh, you got your, uh, crossbow, okay, in the top here. His ladder doesn't do much, right? It's just basically a stationary vehicle. It's got his pouch on the side, okay? So really cool. Even some little hairs on the paint scheme left and right. So pretty cool. But of course, you can't have Chewbacca without Han Solo. It's kind of fun. It's like all the Cars characters were cosplaying. You know, you can imagine the movie coming out, and they were all cosplaying. So, and I got to say, this is probably my favorite, okay? And the reason I say that is because, uh, first you've got his hood is the vest. His one extra exhaust here thing is his, is his blaster. He's got the brown um, rooftop, okay? And he's got, which I guess is his hair. You got his blue pants with his uh, blood stripe all the way around. That would so be something Ramon would do. Um, so such a cool thing, and it's just really low and you know low and slow, just like just like Ramon. So really cool. So I gotta put him over here by um, by Chewbacca. All right, and then we have our two pack of Sand Troopers, which of course are you know the. <laughs> You know, I, I do, to, to, to young collectors out there, if you're thinking about collecting, a couple of things you should be made aware of. One of them is that you're going to be trying, people are going to try to sell you a lot of things. And one of the things they're going to try to sell you is exclusives. Okay? The thing about exclusives is that, you know, exclusives are, it depends on what you want. Now, I will say this, more, more cool than even the box, than, you know, than this, it does come with a display. So for this group, for this one, I'm probably going to end up just keeping the display. All right. I, and the reason for it is because, I mean, I don't want to, it's got a nice little backdrop. All right. You can see it's got, in the back, it's got, uh, looks like, well, here's a really cool thing. Remember, the, if those of you who know Star Wars, I'm sure most people watching this show do, the part where 3 po is walking in the background and he comes across the skeleton of the Krayt Dragon, well, it looks like they have a skeleton of a Krayt Dragon, but it is altered to look more like a crashed vehicle because it's cars so that's really cool so you can take it out of here if you want um i've decided that um this display like this is enough i can put one on top of it i can put two on top of it so wherever i end put end up putting this um, i'm going to leave it in its display all right i think the display is fine it has a little description on the back you know, acrylic displays I don't like to mess with. They're 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 really nice, and if I do open it up, I either have to throw out the acrylic display or or store it someplace. And I got to tell you guys, I'm not a collector that likes to store things. Okay, and I'll just you know get go off on a tangent here for a minute. I appreciate collectors who collect things and then keep them in a box and never take them out and never enjoy them. They just collect them to say that they have them. I don't understand it. I respect it, but I don't understand it. I said you know these are things that you're spending hard-earned money on. This is what you're spending your, you know, you could be spending it on other things that you can physically see and touch, okay? But, you know, I respect people's desire to keep things pristine in the box. I don't mind, and that's one thing, to put something on display. You put something in a box in a mint package and display it, okay. That's almost the same as what I do. But even though I take my stuff out of the box, I still display it. So to display it, whether it's in the box or out of the box, to me, there's hardly any difference there. You like and get you get enjoyment, a nostalgic feel, whatever it might be, out of that, and that's a good thing. But if you buy something, spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars on it, and then wrap it up in plastic, wrap it in more plastic, seal it up airtight, put it in a box, put it in another box, put that box in a filing cabinet, close the filing cabinet, lock the filing cabinet, and never take it out? Yeah, I'm not really, really getting that. But, again... You know, to each their own. So, this one, at least it's in a, it's in a visible display. We can see it. If I ever really wanted to take it out to look at it more in, in detail, I could. So, that will be that. Okay, let's move on to the Empire Strikes Back vehicles, in which we have two in, in this episode. We've got Fillmore as Yoda. <laughs> and, I, 
I can imagine that before you got a hold of some of that organic fuel, had a little too much of it, might start talking backwards like Yoda. So who knows? He comes with his little ears. Okay, he's got a kind of a dirtied up face, and in the paint scheme of his robe and inner robe, outer robe, outer tu inner tunic, outer robe, all sitting there around the sides. I like the green wheels too. That's fun. So very good on uh, Fillmore. And lastly, we have again Chick Hicks as Boba Fett. I always thought, now, I think that you couldn't have gotten a better um, character, in my opinion, than Chick Hicks as um, Boba Fett. Because not just in the sense of the character is kind of like a Boba Fett as a villain, um, who, you know, he just you know he works for the highest bidder, that type of thing. It seems like all Chick Hick wants to do is get those sponsorships and win, be the winner and get those. And he doesn't care who he runs over for it. So they have similar personalities in that regard. But if you look at the car of Chick Hicks, Chick is very um, boxy. You know, he's a very boxy car. He's not well-rounded. He's not like he's like the total opposite of uh, of um, both the Porsche uh, Sally and Lightning McQueen, who are definitely more rounded, more softer. But Chick Hicks is definitely more boxed in and more angular. And that's how kind of Boba Fett's armor was. Everything was very angular. And that's what made him kind of cool. So they kind of, you know, put the paint scheme in. Again, they gave the, the blaster as part of the exhaust. They put his backpack on the back. Okay, so pretty cool. And he even has, some, he even has that little Boba, Head, Boba Fett skull symbol on his side. So good with the detail. So, you know, just some of the Cars um, Disney crossovers. There there have been others. I mean, obviously, they, they had the Disney characters also cross over into Star Wars characters. They did that for many years. Um, they also had the Muppets, and they did a few with the Muppets. I have a couple even back here you might be able to see. And they've had um, the, uh, well, other Star Wars Disney. There's a little bit a lot of Star Wars Disney. I could probably do multiple shows on the Star Wars Disney crossover. And this is all prior to Disney purchasing Disney purchasing Star Wars. This is all stuff that happened before that. So, all right. So I think that will do it. I do want to say one quick thing, and that is a little update. I'm going to probably give um, week to week or episode to episode updates on the uh, HasLab Java Sail Barge um, crowdfunding project. And it looks like as of, I think, this morning, there were about 1,934 um, purchases, all right, with about 32, 33 days left, and um, they're waiting to get to 5,000. At this rate, it's hard to tell if they're going to do that. I don't know if there'll be any surges or if it's just going to kind of trickle up and they're going to see where, where it gets to once they get to something either 5,000 or close to 5,000. I've never been part of something like this before, so I couldn't even tell you um, what to expect from it. But I can tell you that I will give you updates, and once I know something is going to happen, I will share that. And I do know that if they do decide to do it, we are also getting a pamphlet, like a 30-40 like a page booklet, all about the creation of it. I'll show that in an episode so you can see what that is, and we'll go from there. All right, so that'll do it for this episode of uh, Darth Dude with Star Wars Unboxing Show. Like, subscribe, share, hit the notification button. Spread the word. I'd like to get some more subscribers. I mean, even if people don't want to watch all the episodes or just want to watch certain episodes, I get that. But spread the word. Let, let other people, let friends, other kids, other people who other, you know, young kids, young and old who might enjoy this kind of show just so they know that it's out there. It's simple, it's easy, it's nothing too crazy. Um, but just, it, but it's honest, that's what I'm gonna say. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and let me know if you have any more comments. I will get some more giveaways going. And it, until then, you can check out the Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing page on Facebook. You can go to at Darth Tuba for Twitter and Instagram. Email me, darthtuba77 at gmail.com if you have any questions, or leave comments on any episodes for questions. So thank you so much. Until next time, May the Force be with you.